tutorial we're going to look at some problems, some common problems that you may encounter with uh, usually with first time translators. All right, the first one we're going to look at here is uh, bullet problems where you get the wrong character for bullets. And for that we're going to take a look at the Colossians Italian translation. Here you'll see that we've got a bracket here instead of the usual bullet, the square bullet that uh, we need to have on our commentaries. Secondly, we're going to look at uh, box text overflow. This is where text runs into a box border. And ideally, there should be a consistent space between text and the box surrounding it. We're going to look at that same test, that same uh, commentary right here, where you've got the text on the left here running into the side of the box. This can occur either on the left or on the right, and uh, many times it makes the text um, unreadable. For our third problem, we're going to look at Greek characters that are displayed incorrectly. And uh, we'll take a look at the uh, page 43 on that same document. Okay, so here we've got par, and then we've got instead of an E with a, um, a bar on top of it, we've got a box. So to look at the correct, I'm not sure we have the correct, uh, no we do not, sorry, we don't have the correct representation of that, but it's, a, it's an E, capital E, with a bar on top of it. And to uh, find this, you can just look in the original document, original PDF, and see what the correct character is. All right, next. Uh, Hebrew characters, same thing, don't display correctly. Or they display in the wrong order. Wrong order is very common with the Hebrew characters because it's a left, uh, it's a right to left character representation, and sometimes the translators will get them mixed up. So, in order to correct this, we refer to the original document, and then Bob has a chart that he can uh, scan and send to you so that you can get some more information on this. So we're going to look at this Ephesians and uh, you can see here actually these characters don't even look like Hebrew characters that he's got here. They look to me they look a little bit like Armenian characters. The last one or the first one and this would be first in Hebrew uh, because it goes from uh, right to left that's a correct character, or it, at least it's a Hebrew character. But then he's got two other characters that, that don't have anything to do with Hebrew. So we'll take a look and see what they're supposed to look like. And here in the original document, this is what it looks like. You can see that he's got the last one correct. The first one and the second one are not even close. Same thing with uh, down on this this is the correct this is the original document here and uh, down here okay so this is what he's got and this takes a little bit a little while a little bit of training basically I don't usually look at every single one of the Greek or Hebrew characters or Hebrew words but if I see that there's a problem that'll flag I'll, I'll tell the translator about it. You've got a problem with uh, your Hebrew or your Greek and uh, have them take a double look at it. Um, so that there actually is not correct. And so he's got that incorrect too. So he's going to have to correct that. Okay, the next would be uh, line spacing problems. And this would be too many spaces between paragraphs or other elements 
such as boxes. We'll go to that Ephesians way down to the end of that. I noticed that these they've got a few extra spaces. This is a little bit picky. It's not something that really uh, makes a big difference in the quality of the translation. But if they do it a lot, it's something that needs to be brought to their attention. You've got too many spaces here. You don't need to have this many spaces. It distracts from the uh, quality of the document. Um, then we'll go to uh, the next one. Um, bad chapter breaks. Okay, this these are chapters that don't begin at the top of a page. I do not have an example for this, but it's self-explanatory. They'll have the chapter that starts in the uh, middle of the page in the end of the previous chapter at the top of the page. Obviously, this is not what you want. You want a uh, chapter starting at the top of a page. This is something that you'll get a lot of with uh, first-time translators. They'll have bad outline format. The most common problem is they don't know how to or they've incorrectly done the hanging indent style. And to look at that, that's actually something that I've addressed in the uh, translation requirements because it has been such a problem in the past. So hopefully uh, this uh, giving this document to the first time translators will help them realize that this is what they need to do. Of course here the hanging style, indent style, and then this is what you see a lot of when people try to uh, give you uh, submit an outline that's this where everything is flush left and so they'll have to be made aware of that and correct it to the correct outline hanging out hanging indent style next problem is that fonts do not display correctly there are garbled or illegible font output and these are going to be in some exotic type of uh, languages such as uh, Burmese or this one here so this is just giving you a bunch of garbled characters doesn't make any sense and to correct that you simply need to install the correct font and these can be either you can either ask the translator to send these fonts to you or you can find them uh, somewhere online next we're going to look at a odd problem that actually uh, I've only encountered one time which is transliteration and uh, we're going to look at the Greek here alright so what this person has done they have not translated this quote unquote translation at all this is somebody passed this off as a Greek translation when you can look and see that it says this this is a word from the author how can this commentary help you and it's just converted or translated uh, sorry transliterated from a, uh, a a Latin character to a Greek character and uh, this was pretty amazing that somebody would try to pass this off as a translation then the last uh, problem that uh, we'll talk about but it will it'll be on a different one will be machine translation so that's the end of this we'll talk about that at a different uh, module